الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحبی وسلم اما بیر حبت فلّہ تو پروفیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سید المر او الدین قلیلی المر او الدین خلیلی that a person is upon the religion of his companion. Ahabatifillah, this hadith, and, and then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say, look to those who you take as your companions. This hadith of Rasulullah ﷺ offers us immense benefits with regards to our daily lives. One of the ways in which I, I was reflecting on in which this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offers us immense benefits is that when we look and we see how much backbiting we do in our, our, our daily budget of backbiting if if you will meaning that you know there's probably a minimum a minimum amount of backbiting that we engage in daily a minimum meaning that every day we engage in some form of backbiting we're speaking about someone in an ill fashion uh in a in a me in a, me, in a manner in which they would disapprove of or they disapprove of because it's an inclination that we have. I dare to say, and I don't like to say a natural inclination, but it's hardly, it, it's very difficult to think of any people who are not afflicted by this in some form or another. Some cultures and some people in accordance with their iman are much better at repressing this characteristic. And this characteristic is medmuma. It is a sinful characteristic. And so going back to the hadith, al-mar'u ala deen khalilihi, that a person is upon the religion of, the per of their companions, it does not necessarily mean that a person is on the same Dean, meaning that you might have friends that perhaps are mushriks, that they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they worship many gods. They might worship the Sikh god. They might worship various Hindu gods and elephants and think that they are sacred. Whether they're their intimate companions or not, this is something outside of what I want to talk about. My point is, is it doesn't necessarily mean that you are as a person who bears witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the last prophet and messenger, that doesn't mean that you are a Hindu now, because you have friends that are Hindus, or friends that are Sikhs, or what have you, or Christians, or Jews, or Buddhist. But rather, this is in reference, a habit to the fact that perhaps you share characteristics and traits of those who you're around, regardless of what their faith is. So meaning if you are around people who are Muslim, but they're wicked Muslims, if all your friends, you're Muslims, you pray sometimes, or whatever the case may be, but you all go to the club together. We know of sisters who would not take off their khimar, and, and a bias, but they go and travel to go to uh, go to strip clubs. This is true. This is something we know. It's min khabar thika from a very reliable source. And so, with that being the case, you see that a person is upon what their friends are. If they have friends that are righteous companions 
calling them to good, then of course they're going to be inclined, inclined towards righteousness and good. If, however, on the other hand, they have people who call them to wickedness and sin, then from the natural inclinations, you're going to be affected by the people you're around and you're going to be involved in wickedness and sin and anywhere in between. So when it comes to backbiting, sometimes we're around people out of some sort of necessity. They may be a co-worker. They may be a family member. They, and they may have totally different values than what we possess. The snow is much deeper than I thought. Alhamdulillah. They may possess uh, totally different values. And with that being the case, you become affected because you're involved, because you're around them so much. And you're involved in certain activities in which you, which are mushtarik, which are activities that you share with them. For example, if they're a family member and they, you know, you're around them. Maybe you live with them, you visit them often. And every time you visit and every time you're around them, they involve themselves in backbiting. You may strive your best to not involve yourself and not listen, but eventually you're going to get caught up in it one form or another. Okay, it may not be immense that you just let your hair down. Some people do. They, they totally are affected. And some people, they try to restrain. But eventually, it's like residual sin that it rubs on you and it wears on you. And you begin to indulge in that activity. Because really, when you're uh, around someone, mostly, in some form or another, you are influencing them or they are influencing you. So another way to put that is you are giving them dawah or they're giving you dawah one form, in one form or another. Because if you're silent and weak on your Islam, you know, and we all get like that, then perhaps you're going to be just only talking about and reminiscing on evil things or bad things or involving yourself with and engaging in backbiting and namima. And so this is this why we see the hikmah of that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a person is upon the religion or way or path, if you will, of their companions, of their companion, because if they take them as an intimate friend and companion, then of course they're going to be influenced, and they're going to involve. They're going to have some sort of behavior obviously, and uh, some sort of traits that they share. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be friends. Usually, you're not friends with someone who's a total opposite of you. You know, that usually doesn't last very long. And if it is, if there is some sort of way that you complement one another or what have you, the bottom line is, if they are someone uh, negative, you know, they have a negative outlook on life, or they're sinful, sinful traits, sinful speech, wicked behavior, then of course this is going to influence you. Unless you have the upper hand and respect and are able to influence them. But eventually there will more than likely be a mutual influence. And this is what we see, why we see this warning uh, and this, uh, the importance of this hadith. That a person is upon the religion of their companion. And so we ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, and bless us with righteous companions and righteous family members. May Allah guide us all, protect us all, and preserve us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.